So this is basically Blackwell. Now this is one of the things that's really incredible about the system. Let me show it to you. We dedicated ourselves to advance this field. And so this is what we now build. What all of you have initially, when I first met India, we were building GPUs that fit into a PCI Express card that goes into your PC. This is what a GPU looks like today. This is Blackwell. Incredible system that is designed to study data at an enormous scale. Yeah, thank you. The speaker wants to convey that AI demand is expanding beyond hyperscalers to various enterprises and governments, and NVIDIA's competitive edge, while strong in training, may enhance further with increasing inference complexity. These fundamental ideas, essentially a universal translator of information from any modality to another modality, has led to a Cambrian explosion of the number of startups in the world. They're applying the basic method I just described. If I could do this and that, what else can I do? If I can do that and this, what else can I do? The number of applications has clearly exploded. NVIDIA's market dominance may face challenges from smaller competitors, but its diverse innovations like the Grace CPU and advanced connectivity strengthen its competitive edge and leadership. In the last couple, two, three years, the number of generative AI companies around the world, tens of thousands, tens of billions of dollars have been invested in this field, all because of this one instrument that made it possible for us to study data at enormous scales. Well, I just want to say that, that uh, in order to build the Blackwell system, of course, the Blackwell GPU is involved, but it takes seven other chips. TSMC manufacture all of these chips, and they're just doing an extraordinary job ramping the Blackwell system. This is in a, all, in, Blackwell is in full production, and we're hoping to, uh, we're expecting to deliver in volume production in Q4. And so NVIDIA faces tough competition and potential demand slowdowns. However, I believe they remain vigilant and innovative, making it difficult for rivals to catch up in the next 12 to 18 months. So this is basically Blackwell. Now, this is one of the things that's really incredible about the system. Let me show it to you. This is MVLink, and it goes across the entire back spine of a rack of GPUs. And these GPUs are all connected from the top to the bottom using NVLink driving these incredible CERTES, the world's longest driving CERTES for copper. And it connects uh, all of these GPUs together. 72 dual GPU packages of Blackwell's, 144 GPUs, connected together so it's one giant GPU. If I were to spread out all of the chips. Investors are optimistic for 2025. But concerns about rising capex impacting hyperscalers' margins and cash flow in 2026 persist. Overall, we maintain a positive outlook on stock performance. To show you what this connects together, it's essentially a GPU so large it'd be like this big. But it's obviously impossible to build GPUs that large, so we break it up into the, lar the smallest chunks we could, which is reticle limits and the most advanced technologies, and we connect it together using NVLink. This is NVLink backspine. You're looking at all of the GPUs being connected. That's the quantum switch that connects all of these GPUs together on top. Spectrum X, if you would like to have Ethernet. And uh, what connects this together, this is like 50 pounds. This, I'm just demonstrating how strong I am. This is connected to this switch. And this is one of the most advanced switches the world's ever built. Now, all of this together represents Blackwell. And then it runs the software uh, that's on top. The CUDA software, CUDNN software, uh, Megatron for training the large language models, TensorRT for doing the inference, TensorRT LLM for doing uh, distributed multi-GPU inference for large language models. And then on top of that, we have two software stacks. One is NVIDIA AI Enterprise that I'll talk about in a second, and then the other is Omniverse. I'll talk about both of those in a second. We're optimistic about 2025's earnings, projecting an EPS around $46515 per cent above consensus. 
With insights from hyperscalers and NVIDIA, we expect upward revisions will drive the stock higher before. So this is the Blackwell system. This is what NVIDIA builds today. Uh, those of you who have known us for a very long time, it's really quite surprising how the company has transformed. But literally, we reason from first principles how computing was going to be done in the future, and this is Blackwell. Now, the Blackwell system... And last but certainly not least, we have NVIDIA, the powerhouse of the AI chip industry, poised to conclude the impressive lineup of reports from the Magnificent Seven by the end of November. This tech giant boasts a staggering market capitalization that exceeds $3 trillion, underscoring its dominance and influence in the market. Joining us today for a deeper dive into NVIDIA's performance and outlook is Tashir Hari, who serves as the head of US semiconductor research at Goldman Sachs. Notably, Toshia holds a bullish buy rating on NVIDIA, reflecting his confidence in the company's trajectory. Toshia, it's always a pleasure to engage with you, especially given your extensive insights into NVIDIA's operations and strategies. I understand that you recently had the opportunity to meet with Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA. Additionally, he was a key speaker at the Goldman Tech Conference earlier this year, where he shared valuable insights about the company's future. Reflecting on your discussions with him, I'm curious to know what the most significant takeaway was that might shape your perspective as we approach NVIDIA's earnings report. Of course, thank you so much for having me, Madison. You're absolutely right we had the privilege of hosting Jensen at our conference back in early September, and we also travelled with him and his team recently. There are a couple of key points that emerged from our conversations. First and foremost, the demand profile for NVIDIA's products remains exceptionally robust. This demand is a positive indicator of the company's future performance. However, it's important to note that if there is a challenge, it lies in supply constraints rather than a lack of demand. The environment continues to be dynamic, and the interplay between supply and demand will certainly be a critical factor as we head into NVIDIA's upcoming print. Understanding these nuances will be essential for investors and analysts alike as they navigate the complexities of this rapidly evolving industry. The issue at hand is not merely a demand problem, it encompasses a much broader landscape of opportunities and challenges. As we prepare to hear from several of the large hyperscalers next week, it's important to recognize that these companies are still in the early stages of building out their AI infrastructure. This is not just limited to hyperscalers, though the customer profile is expanding significantly to include a diverse range of enterprises and even sovereign states. This signals a robust and widespread demand for AI capabilities across multiple sectors. Moreover, there has been a long-standing perception that NVIDIA holds a dominant position primarily in the training of AI models. However, as we transition into the realm of inference the application of AI models in real-world scenarios this competitive landscape could undergo some shifts. Recent advancements from organizations like OpenAI demonstrate that the complexity of inference workloads is on the rise. As more sophisticated models emerge, we anticipate that this complexity will only increase, presenting NVIDIA with a unique growth opportunity. This evolution not only enhances NVIDIA's growth potential but also has the potential to strengthen its competitive moat in the market. In summary, the demand for AI solutions is not just strong, it is expanding, and NVIDIA's position remains resilient and promising as we move forward into this new phase of AI development. There seems to be a growing concern regarding NVIDIA's potential decline in market dominance, particularly as some smaller competitors appear to be gaining ground and developing a competitive edge. While this situation warrants careful observation, it doesn't seem to be causing you much worry. It's certainly a factor to consider, especially with several emerging startups making impressive strides in the tech landscape. Additionally, there are other established companies that are effectively positioning themselves as competitors to NVIDIA, further intensifying the competitive landscape. However, when you evaluate NVIDIA's overall capacity for innovation, it's clear that they maintain a robust position in the market. Their capabilities extend well beyond just graphics processing units GPUs. For instance, they have developed their own internal CPU, known as the Grace CPU, which showcases their commitment to diversifying their hardware portfolio. Moreover, NVIDIA has introduced NVLink, a sophisticated switching technology designed to connect multiple GPUs, enhancing performance and efficiency. In addition to these innovations, NVIDIA's offerings include advanced Ethernet connectivity and InfiniBand solutions, both of which are crucial for high-speed data transfer and communication in complex computing environments. Furthermore, NVIDIA has a comprehensive suite of software that complements its hardware, 
effectively enhancing its overall performance and usability. When considering the breadth of NVIDIA's technological ecosystem spanning various components and software solutions, it's clear that the company has a multifaceted approach to maintaining its market leadership. This extensive range of products and services not only solidifies NVIDIA's current standing, but also positions it well against emerging competitors in the tech industry. The ability of companies to compete with NVIDIA in the next 12 to 18 months, particularly in terms of cadence and innovation, presents a significant challenge. I believe it will be incredibly difficult, both in terms of financial investment and technological development, for other firms to match NVIDIA's capabilities head to head. I'd like to get your thoughts on this, Tishia, especially considering two points that analysts we've consulted have highlighted in what they describe as a somewhat bearish outlook for NVIDIA. While it's hard to take an outright bearish stance on the company at this moment, there are concerns about potential competitors, such as Cerebras, and the possibility of a slowdown in demand if we encounter macroeconomic challenges in the near future. Between these two factors emerging competition and demand fluctuations which do you perceive as being more significant, or do you think that neither of these issues will pose a substantial threat to NVIDIA growth? It's an intriguing question. In discussions with investors, I find that the concern about a slowdown in demand tends to come up more frequently. However, it's important to note that NVIDIA doesn't appear to be complacent, they remain quite vigilant and proactive regarding potential competition. The real conversation, I believe, revolves around how we assess the sustainability of NVIDIA market position in light of these dynamics. Looking ahead, there's a notable sense of comfort among the majority of investors regarding the outlook for the calendar year 2025. However, the real uncertainty looms over calendar 2026. A primary concern is the ongoing increase in capital expenditures capex among hyperscalers. This rise in spending could potentially have adverse effects on their gross margins and free cash flow, leading to critical implications for the financial landscape in 2026 and beyond. In light of these factors, I find myself more apprehensive about what 2026 might bring. Nonetheless, at this juncture, my outlook on the stock remains quite optimistic, as I believe in the positive trajectory it's currently on. When discussing the hyperscalers and their capex in relation to NVIDIA, a central question arises regarding the return on investment for these companies. Currently, it appears that, as a collective group, the hyperscalers are very much focused on building out their infrastructure. According to our colleagues' capital spending estimates for calendar 2025, the projected growth rate is expected to fall in the mid-teens to high-teens percentage range. Moreover, based on insights from our discussions with customers, partners and the supply chain in Asia, there may be even greater upside potential to these initial estimates. As we approach the reporting period next week, where some significant customers will disclose their results, we anticipate uncovering more details that could influence these projections. Ultimately, while the conversation centres primarily around 2025, the larger debate is really about the outlook for 2026 and beyond. Predicting future trends in this landscape is particularly challenging, making it difficult to ascertain where things might be headed after 2025. As we sit here reflecting on the past 62 months, it becomes increasingly clear that the anticipated monetization has not yet materialised to the extent we had hoped. The return on investment, or ROI, has been somewhat underwhelming, leading to growing concerns. This concern extends beyond just NVIDIA, it encompasses the broader ecosystem of companies that are integral to the AI infrastructure. However, at this juncture, it's important to emphasise that our outlook remains very constructive. So T, given these insights, what does this imply about the future trajectory of the stock? My expectation is that we will see it trending upward. In fact, I believe we may be on the brink of reaching new all-time highs. That's correct, we do anticipate this upward movement in stock performance as the market adjusts and responds to evolving conditions. When we take a closer look at the earnings profile for the year 2025, particularly in comparison to the consensus estimates from Wall Street, we see some promising signs. Our current modelling suggests an earnings per share EPS figure of approximately $465, give or take some fluctuations. As of this morning, our projections are roughly 15% higher than the consensus expectations on the street.